थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग माई पॉडकास्ट बिक बिकॉज आई कैन विथ श्रीधान वॉट विल यू कॉल अ पर्सन हुज सेवियर हुज एक्शन स्पीक्स मोर देन वर्ड्स हु एफोलेसली सेल्फलेसली प्रोटेक्ट अस द प्राइड ऑफ आर नेशन वर्ड्स आर लेस यू डिस्क्राइब दैम देर अ वॉरियर फाइटर प्रोटेक्टर माई स्टेल प्रोटेगनिस्ट आयन मैन स्पाइडर मैन Avengers are fail in front of them. They are a real superheroes. We pride they rise, an eagle soaring high. With confidence they stand, and with smartness they strive. Here I welcome one of the most strongest commando, and with love we call him Victor. It is my honor and privilege to have you here, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir. So how are you feeling today sir? Absolutely fine Ridan. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. You're welcome. <laughs> well, if I were to say I am super happy and extremely excited. Me too Ridan. <laughs> That's nice. So sir can you please tell us more about yourself? Okay. So Ridan for the purposes of our conversation, uh you can call me Victor or you can say sir. <laughs> I am around the midlife of my age. I am married. Uh my family is settled in Pune and I have had the privilege of being in the Indian Army where the highlights would be that I have been a paratrooper and I have also been part of the NSG which popularly are called the Black Cat Commandos. My life involves my professional duties, my family life. my hobbies which are uh, martial arts fitness and reading hmm that's amazing yes you done <laughs> so so let me take you to your childhood and ask questions which i am super curious to know okay so so can you tell us you as a child were you naughty or obedient or something else ridan if one uh one aspect of childhood is to be picked out um i was dreamy so in class or with my friends no matter what was going on always there was something else in my mind and my father was also in the army so uh, school is from class 1 to 12 in those 12 years i have studied in six schools so six towns and cities so personality changes a little bit throughout but i think for a very long time i associated being shy with my childhood later on i realized that it was not really shyness that i just had a different choice of activities and people ah so that would stand out yes hmm that's great so so who was your favorite person i can see go to a person mother father grandparents uh, um again Uh, because my father moved around every 2 years so other than my parents i had didn't have a lot of interaction with my family but oh. if i if i still had to choose it would be my grandfather and my father both of them very strong male figures to look up to and i won't say that my choices in life have been inspired by them but everything that interests me even till now is very uh, very similar to what both of them did my grandfather used to hunt he was in the railways um, he used to hunt he has boxed he used to wrestle my father was fond of the forests the jungles he was fond of climbing mountains he was fond of hunting so all of that came to me even though they didn't get me involved in those things indirectly i don't know how it influenced me and so they were the biggest inspirations wow i've always heard that mm, a son's greatest blessing is a mother and a son's greatest look up to yes that inspiration is a father yes so that's and my father inspires me a lot he is very inspirational to me the way he works so hard he works day to night and he works sleeplessly and i want to thank ridan like your father my father if any time would be asked I asked your father uh sometime back as to what his weekend is like and his weekend revolves around you. I asked him what his work is like and his work revolves around you. So I think if you had asked my father this when I was in school you would have the same answers. Ah. Uh, 
आई एम सो ब्यूटिफुल जय श्री राम सो सो हु वाज स्ट्रिक्ट हु वाज स्ट्रिक्ट या ओके सो स्ट्रिक्टनेस इज समथिंग दैट बोथ माय पेरेंट्स कंपीटेड ऑन माय फादर वाज स्ट्रिक्ट बाय पर्सनालिटी and voice and my mother was strict with actions i don't know if children of your generation are familiar uh with the uh, desi flying chappal of mothers but my generation uh, mothers flying chappal jhadu umbrella all of these things were part of our childhood and uh, so strictness came from both ah <laughs> So so what were your hobbies as a child and how are they different now The best thing to done is that my hobbies are just the same uh, I was fond of climbing trees going up hills hunting and I don't mean it in a cruel way I mean catching birds and letting them go that requires its own wit and skill uh, I was fond of martial arts as a child I do that even now fitness I was fond of making routines as a child I do that now my hobbies are just the same music playing the guitar all of them just the same wow i'm also very passionate about playing the guitar <laughs> i uh, have one guitar and i simply love playing on it yeah it just feels sometimes when i'm bored i just play the guitar and i just feel comfortable again good rudan uh, so in uh, this year or this month i am learning a song it's um mame jaan me and my mother love singing it it's just we are both are very connected to it so we just love it so i'm learning that on guitar and these days i've also found the passion of guitar that i can find songs i can create songs in you know, mame jaan i was making their head part my sir decided to um, leave the part to us me and my friend ayansh okay so we both create the parts mm-hmm. yeah so the first time i did i don't know why but it felt like a voice was telling me everything and i was just knowing it down it it happened so quickly one hour it uh, all completed i was expecting it to be 2 hours or 3 hours it take a lot of time but hopefully it happened less time you're a very creative person vidhan for me things were very simple i thought that the guitar looked the fanciest out of all the instruments and i picked it up <laughs> and then i realized it's the easiest instrument to carry around i can't carry a drum set around with me so that's mm. how the guitar stuck hmm <laughs> that's nice so so where did you grow up vidhan uh, like i said my father was in the army and moved around six places Ah. So uh all parts of the country south central north northeast and the west there's no one i think we have stayed the most in pune but that was after i had you can say grown up my 10th 11th and 12th graduation is what i did from pune ah but growing up happened all over the country <laughs> so how was the journey the trip the trip was fast very enjoyable and uh I can't associate just one memory or one emotion with it. When you're done with your childhood, you'll understand what I'm telling you. Hmm. I should think about that fact. So, so how were you in academics? Were you ever interested in singing, music, drama, or anything else? So, uh, academics and extracurricular, I think, is what you're trying to ask me. Yeah. academics ridan i think i was all right so generally academics is judged in our country with your 10th and your 12th i got 80% in both which is all right and uh, otherwise i think till i was very under my mother's control i was outstanding i was first or second in my class always and then i studied in delhi for a while which is a very big city and before that i had been a small town boy so that was a shock and then i recovered from it in my 10th 11th and 12th i did fairly well in my engineering extra curricular wise like i told you i think shyness is something that was very associated with me that was post delhi i have generally done things which uh, children would do i have taken part in uh, 
these quiz competitions a few sports competitions i've taken part in whatever cultural activities are there in school but nothing outstanding because what i wanted to do ridan was very personal i mean like i told you i thought it was shyness it wasn't that time martial arts wasn't really a big part of school and i could do that once i joined college so that is where i shown later on ah outstanding journey <laughs> so um so when did you realize you want to be a soldier any incident that triggered this thought ridan i'm glad you asked me this question even though i told you that my father was in the army because my father being in the army had very little to do with my choosing to join the army generally i have also seen i mean i don't have kids as of now but i have seen with children that when they're small they tend to latch on to some things whether it's a particular kind of tv show or it's a particular kind of book or toys and everything that i wanted to do i now realize was pointing towards me ending up in the uniform there i can again tell you that there is no one moment or one inspirational person that made me want to join it is just the entire lifestyle that i liked discipline fitness being part of something bigger than yourself the outdoors adventure and i don't think any other uh, organization or profession gives you all of this in one so i had no choice but to end up being in the army uh so um so could you explain a little how i mean that um so the father, so your father made you join the army or you wanted to join no no you feel it was my decision alone ah uh, uh my family was not for me joining the army in fact the only slight fractures that we have had between us i mean my parents and me were because i wanted to join the army and they did not want me to join the army oh did they like get angry oh they got very angry ridan it was a very very bad time it took it took uh, two two and a half years for me and i never convinced them that i should join what happened is that uh, my father didn't want me to join and it was a bad time my mother didn't want me to join i was doing my graduation here in pune my father was not in pune they came down from wherever they were and they spent two weeks with me there was a lot of arguing as to who was right and at that time choices were very limited you really could not tell your parents you know your hopes and dreams and expect them to understand because the country the economy everything was moving very differently to what it is now and my father told me after i joined the army as to when he realized that there is no option and that was when we were driving through pune and when we started entering the cantonment area i told my mom that uh, mama doesn't it feel like we have come home and then my father told me that in his mind it clicked that there is no hope if the minute we enter and i see the lights and the walls and the boundaries and the buildings of the cantonment and i think i'm home so the army is where i'm supposed to be and then he never told me anything ah uh, hmm so i just don't understand that before your father was a person from the army right yes yes so i just don't understand why didn't the father support you to join the army yeah didan there are quite a few reasons see one being that uh, i'm the only son the army is a profession by default where you're going and danger is a part of the profession mm very true then uh, even when you're working outside your company might send you to other places but they might send you to other places you still can choose to get a job in the same city where your family is which is not so yeah. again my father had been in the army and he just wanted me to have a different life so all of these things taken into consideration he was not for me Oh Johnny. so so you didn't want you to like live a dangerous life of the army right Yes 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 Ah uh, So what did they want you to be your parents exactly Uh back then Ridan there was a very typical line that one would follow You would after your 10th there were three streams science commerce and arts So you had to go to science if you wanted to do well that is what you were told go to science after science if you're okay in maths you go to engineering otherwise you go and try and become a doctor so it was either be an engineer and then join the corporate or then be a doctor and biology is not something that interested me so engineering is what my parents wanted me to do and then join some company ah uh, 
so you so were you more interested in uh, being in a company or did you feel like i should join the army the dancy because uh, my i mean like i said we had few choices and uh, we could not speak to our parents as much as now children can so i did end up joining engineering and maybe i might have uh joined a company outside if that environment would have motivated me to do so i remember like i told you i was a little different in my approach to things we used to have people from the corporate industry coming to our colleges and like in school i was a little different and when students would ask questions their questions would be about pay packages i remember this because i was warned by my professors after three lectures that the next time i ask my question i'll tell you what my question was that the next time i ask my question i won't be allowed to sit so i would ask people do you enjoy your job yeah and that would confuse the person on the stage and they could not answer this so when i realized that a lot of the people who are doing their engineering and then getting into companies are not enjoying what they wanted to do i decided that again what i had thought and that was joining the army is what i would do mm that was a nice question indeed so so if you were not a soldier then what would you have been rudhan i didn't give this a thought uh but now that i have uh, gone through my journey and in case people come to me and ask me see uh the army has a very strict cut off i'll explain to you a little later what i mean by strict cut off you can prepare all you want and you still might not get through and nobody who i have ever come across wanting to join the army wants to join because they think it will give them perks and privileges or it will give them a wonderful pay or it will give them a wonderful comfortable life all of them want to join for passion so if they don't get through it breaks their heart it really breaks their heart it is worse than you know if when people try and uh, appear for engineering entrance exams or iit entrance exams they don't get heartbroken as much as do they do when they're trying to join the army so now i tell them that and i would have told myself this in case i had not gotten through that uh, you might not get through the army but you can outline what it means to be part of the army what habits what culture it is in the army and you can live that kind of lifestyle no matter where you are wow so that's a very very positive thought so so um what were you what were the challenges you faced at the time i mean that how was everything going so as you were joining the army how was everything going what were the problems you were facing at that time convincing your parents okay so convincing my parents we did cover a little bit yes uh at that time i'll take you to around third year of college okay so when you are in your third year of college is when people start looking at uh getting placed which means that companies start coming to your yeah. colleges and they start taking interviews oh. now i was not interested and uh, there is pressure from your family there is uh your friend circle everybody is going for these interviews that you don't want to go to and uh, i didn't let any of my friends come home during that time because they were getting placed and then they would come home and tell my parents that we have got through this company and i wasn't sitting for any uh, interviews so it was a it was a very uh, like you said challenging time because the army does come to take interviews and like i told you that you're not sure if you get through also i was the only one in my college who filled the form oh so i was the only one you go and appear it's a very it's a very very difficult entrance it's not it's not an entrance that you can when i say difficult i'll tell you in, in some time i like i told you before i'll cover this but uh, you aren't sure i mean if you, if if you really really study for an exam or if you really prepare for an interview that a company is coming you know you you have these multiple choice questions and you prepare for them you still have some surety that you'll get through here i wasn't sure so the environment is telling me that you know you're supposed to join or maybe try and go for an interview for a, for a company the house is also not supporting you and then you're doing something that doesn't have surety so yes it was a challenging time but uh, once i did get through there was a lot of relief 
Mm, that that is nice. Yeah. Really, very really nice. So, so how did you prep for it? When they ask the questions, how did you prep for it? Okay, so Ridan, like you would for any other entrance or uh, exam, of course. you do a search online. Hmm. Luckily, we had the internet. We already started having the internet. Everybody had it at home. And I did a search. There were some books that you could have gone and bought. I went and bought those books. Uh, and that is what you do. I mean, I went through some books and some tests for about six months, and I went for the selection procedure. Ah. Uh. Actually, Ridan. Uh, Maybe if I tell you for a minute how the selection happens, we'll be a little bit more clear. Because uh, maybe for a school or for your your term exams or for your year-ending exams, you've prepared, but that's not how the army selection happens. Ah. Oh. Okay. So how the army selection happens is that you have a five-day selection procedure. It is five days. Okay. And they do they do yes they do look at what marks you've gotten throughout. But they are looking at what you are as a person. They are looking at your personality, and they take personality tests for five days. Oh! So your preparation for getting through has happened throughout your life. Six months or a year of reading books cannot change your personality so much that you get through in a flash. Yeah. So it's a lifelong. Uh, procedure and that is why like i said it's not very easy to get through ah uh, hmm looks like it was quite different i thought it was an exam it was like a paper you had to it was like the normal examinations i was thinking like that but you clear my thoughts yes ridan ridan uh, there is i mean i don't i i want to make this clear you have people who join the army after their 12th you have people who join after their graduation and then you have people who join after engineering graduation also oh so people who join after their 12th they have a preliminary written exam but after that the difficult part is those 5 days of psychological testing if you've done plain graduation you have to give a written exam as a screening again and then again you have those 5 days and again for a engineering graduate you don't have the written exam but you have those 5 days of selection ah so so was it like that they were going to like see the what we were doing like that in those five days ridan yeah okay so ridan uh, in those five days they test your personality and personality is defined very differently from what people outside think ha huh. personality is how every individual has their own way of reacting to a situation so in the army's way of selection they have three ways of testing you they will make you do a series of tests in which you write but what you write is your reactions to things that they show you so they might show you an image and ask you to write a story they will put a situation in front of you like they might say that uh, ridhan it is raining very heavily and there is a guest coming to your house your mother tells you to go and buy some snacks you will and you write your reaction then you have somebody who takes an interview and that interview can be anywhere from half an hour to an hour and a half and in that interview that person asks you about your life yeah and then there is one last way of testing you where they make you play some games with each other and then they see how you interact with a group of people ah uh, teamwork yes teamwork mm that sounds a little fun it's very fun <laughs> that's great yes yeah so how did you feel wearing the uniform for the first time ridan uh, again when we get ready for school yeah maybe mama or papa are rushing us that you're getting late right in the army before i went i had imagined you know there'll be some nice music playing in my head and i'll be slowly wearing the buttons of my shirt and looking at myself in the mirror the day you arrive for training all your comfort is taken away from you you do not have a second of your own and when you say uniform so you arrive for training and there's not one uniform there are many types of uniforms 
and you're changing uniforms the whole day with some sort of urgency or emergency all the time you do not get to pause or think i can tell you completely honestly i felt nothing other than a sense of urgency of putting on the uniform and i think i felt a lot of pride after maybe 15 years of wearing the uniform uh when i had a lot of badges and i had gone to some place where like when i was a student some students had come for selection and i was walking with my wife and she told me that they were nudging each other to look at my uniform so it took 15 years for me to uh, feel what you are asking me <laughs> and for those first 15 years during training especially i had no time to stand and look and when you when you just finish your training other than your name there is nothing on the uniform other than your name or rank it takes a lot of hard work and it takes years for you to get those badges and those signs that are on your uniform ah uh, so so how was the training there can you tell how was the training uh ridhan when you conventionally go to a school or when you will go to a college and then later on when you go to your whichever company or wherever you go and work people train you for your role they train you for your technical work yeah in the army you are actually broken they have to break everything that you knew before when you join the army they teach you everything from scratch even how to tie your shoes shoelaces uh you have a different way of brushing your teeth you take bath differently you clean your room differently everything is timed everything is tested they even come and check how clean your room is and there are punishments for this so the army training is not only the subjects that you study it is not only physical training there is firing there is horse riding there is swimming there is sports it's all this way of living a particular lifestyle also it is how you interact with your juniors it is how you interact with people who are your equals and it is how you interact with people who are your seniors we have a very very specific way of speaking sitting eating and all of this cannot be done kindly or gently it is done under a lot of pressure extreme amounts of pressure and this word punishment is not something that you will find in any other training establishment so there are punishments that you are going through throughout the day and there is no time where uh, you have a slot allotted for sleeping so like you have a school time table that might be from maybe 8 in the morning till let's say 3 in the afternoon we have something like that we have a time table for the training yeah which ends at maybe you can say 8 in the night but after 8 o'clock in the night your seniors then take on your training so your training does not get over there is a training that happens during the day which is in the schedule and then there is a training that happens in the night throughout the night which has no schedule oh hmm the training is very difficult sir it is difficult well, cool rush to you <laughs> i'm glad you made it thank you ridhan <laughs> so so can you talk about your first mission maybe not the name but you can talk about how the situation was so ridhan my first mission as you can call it was to find this route you understand route a way yeah was to find a way between two features which means two mountains and this was a route on which nobody had been at that time i'm talking quite some time back for almost 50 years nobody had gone there so firstly mountains you can understand it is difficult to climb these mountains had a lot of vegetation as in there was a lot of forest there and not just big trees there was a lot of undergrowth also a lot of grass and it was rainy season so it was very mushy it was very muddy oh. also to walk uh now look at this you can see this sofa in front of you right yes imagine if this was a huge mountain the problem with mountains is that if you look at something from down below it looks like it's connected but when you go up you realize it's not connected let's say that you are standing at a particular place how would you know where you're standing you would look at something in front of you yeah or you would try and see this is where i came from let's say you started from a particular place you have reached somewhere you try and look from there and you like this is where i started from so this is where i am right yeah so this place where we were going ridhan 
there was so much forest and so much tree cover we could not see anything oh so if now we are sitting this far apart we can see each other mm-hmm. maybe another 10 steps and i could not have seen you ah so it sounds like you know i just had to go up and find a route but the minute we went up we didn't know where we were and uh, now when let's say you're going with your father somewhere in traffic how do you figure out where you are well mostly we look at the map yes google map yeah google map works on a technology gps so we use the gps too we use two things one we use a compass yes, with a map and we use the gps yeah now how you see something with the compass and the map is you are standing at some place right you have the compass yeah the compass can tell you where the north is yeah where the north and where the direction where home is yes 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 but it doesn't tell you where you are yes so what you have to do is you have to look at the map and then you have to try and identify three points you have to identify the points three points yeah and then with the compass you take the degree of those three points you make a triangle and at the cutting of that triangle is where you are standing okay but well, how will you do this when you cannot see anything like i said there was so much tree cover we couldn't see anything so then we thought maybe we'll use the gps hmm. the gps also needs the sky to be clear and we were surrounded by forest hmm. so it so it didn't work it didn't work ma and for two weeks every day in the morning at 6 o'clock we would start we would go up completely drenched we would reach up up to our waist in mud we had no idea where we were and it took us about 2 weeks and uh, i think maybe on the 18th day is when we finally hit where we were supposed to go it led to a lot of very good things later on the fact that we found that route and it felt very good hmm it certainly must feel good i finally hit the way has been found yes <laughs> i really hope you enjoyed my conversation with victor sir but we break here for the next part In the second part we're going to talk about how they conduct missions the strengths how they motivate themselves and uh uh-uh, uh I'm not going to tell you everything now you'll have to watch it subscribe now and stay tuned for the second part coming on Friday 18th August Ridhan Jain signing off